Okay, well, good evening, everyone. I'm Jessica Grant. Uh, I'm the interim manager for public works um, for the downtown and uh, oversee uh, transportation planning and parking. Uh, with me tonight on the call is Derek Bailey. Uh, he is our traffic engineer. And I also have uh, Caitlin Mamolski. She'll be helping us through the uh, question and answer uh, period. Um, we are here tonight to discuss the Cliff Drive Vision Zero project. So thank you uh, for spending your evening with us. Um, what we're covering tonight is, is really the, the history for Cliff Drive, what we've heard on this project so far, the active transportation program, which would likely fund um, any improvements on this corridor, uh, our concept plans, uh, Derek Bailey will be bringing us through those, and as well as going over the project cost and grant leveraging next steps and how to continue to stay involved on this uh, project. And at the end, we will take uh, questions and feedback. Uh, you can use the Q&A function <clears throat> that is on your screen, uh, or you can raise your hand and we can unmute you. I first wanted to start off with two poll questions. These will be the only poll questions uh, through tonight's webinar. Um, the first one we wanted to ask is, um, have you attended a prior community workshop about the Cliff Drive Vision Zero project? Go ahead and answer if you can. Jessica, I'm not seeing the poll on the screen yet. Okay. Let's see. I will try it one more time to see if I could re-launch the poll. Relaunch. There we go. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, great. So it does look like a mix um, of, of those that have uh, attended our workshops in the past and, and some of us uh, on the call are, are new to this project. So great. Thank you for coming. And then the only other, we had one more question. Uh, I will get back to that one later. Let, let's continue on. So when we talk about Cliff Drive, um, it's the entire corridor that we will be addressing tonight. So starting at the Las Positas Cliff uh, roundabout area, going all the way uh, along to uh, Castillo Street. So the history, of this corridor is it originally used to be owned by Caltrans. It was the state route 225. Um, it has been pretty much, and still to this day, it configured more like a highway. So there was a certain section of roadway back in 2011, um, south of Meigs to the community college area where there was a lane reduction um, on that stretch of road, which was um, a big improvement at the time. Um, in 2013, the state 25, 225 route was relinquished from Caltrans to the city of Santa Barbara. And that really began this discussions 
uh, for the Cliff Drive corridor to sort of take it from that highway feel uh, to what um, would be more of a, a local street feel. And so community outreach actually began in 2014 to figure out what is the best uh, for this corridor. And uh, we began to have more detailed discussions during the bicycle master plan in 2016. And that's uh, where we heard that there was definitely a need to separate cyclists from um, the roadway uh, for the really the high speeds that are frequent along this corridor. Uh, and um, again, we'll, we'll touch more on what we've heard on the next slide, but there's also been other capital imp improvement projects in the vicinity of this corridor. One of the other big improvements that we saw in 2016 was the roundabout at Cliff and Las Positas um, that used to be a stop control configuration. And so that definitely improved uh, the operations there. And then what you see now that's under construction and hopefully opening very soon is the uh, Las Positas Monoc Road multi-use pathway uh, project. So since the relinquishment, what have we heard from the community? Uh, people did like the road striping um, that was done by Caltrans. They wanted to see that more continued throughout the corridor. The need for more crosswalks. Uh, Cliff Drive is very wide road. Um, need for better cycling facilities, as again, as indicated for the bicycle master plan effort and then continued um, what we've heard in the various workshops, community meetings, stakeholder meetings, uh, et cetera. Uh, we've heard that the traffic is still too fast along this corridor, that access to the Santa Barbara City College is still challenging, and really it still feels like a highway, um, not a local street yet. So we know to address the type of infrastructure improvements that would address the community concerns is this calls for um, infrastructure uh, in the millions to make uh, various enhancements to the Cliff Drive corridor. One grant source that came online in 2014 was the Active Transportation Program. <clears throat> And really with the sole purpose to increase active modes of transportation. Uh, so since the inception of that program, um, it's basically every two years, there's a 450 million statewide. Um, and it's a very, very competitive grant program. We were successful with the Las Positas Modoc multi-use path, again, that you see under construction now. Um, it is something that we did apply for and we'll discuss more throughout this presentation at the last cycle. So um, there's been five cycles to date for this grant source um, and there's going to be a new cycle, cycle six coming up with applications due in June um, that um, if the community is still wanting this uh, for us to apply, we certainly will move forward with trying to get these much needed improvements to the corridor. So some of the um, options of what we heard during the 2019 public meetings uh, was when we last went for the cycle five grant application period is we had some workshops specifically to address um, certain questions of how many crosswalks uh, did we want to see for enhancements along this corridor, um, any improvements for new traffic signals, did we want a one-way bike path on each side of the road or a two-way bike path uh, similar to what you see um, on Las Positas right now? Uh, and then what about 
improvement to, to the neighboring elementary schools and Santa Barbara City College. And, and then really um, balance of traffic operations with better walking and cycling conditions. So the, the overall project purpose for the Cliff Drive Vision Zero project was um, to complete the coastal bike route that I'll show a graphic in, in a moment. So not only just having strong local connections along this corridor, but really seeing the, the bigger picture connections of why this is such uh, a critical piece um, of infrastructure to be improved. Um, again, to improve access to City College and then improve transit and neighborhood access by adding new crosswalks across Cliff Drive that would also help with the other neighboring um, school connections as well. This is a map um, showing the coastal route, which is the regional route that connects Goleta all the way to Ventura. And so in red um, is the Cliff Drive corridor. So you can see again that that, that is a very critical um, piece of infrastructure in the overall, not only local network, but regional network. So when we did package this project that uh, Derek Bailey will go through and, and highlight some of the, the planned improvement areas, um, we, we did submit again an application back in 2020. We came up one point short from the grant cutoff um, because we are just there. Uh, we do think we can make some modifications to the applications that I'll discuss further after we go through the plans uh, to hopefully get um, a winning grant next time for much needed improvements. As I mentioned, the cost for infrastructure runs in the millions. We're basically a $25 million project um, to make these said improvements. With that, I'll hand it off to Mr. Bailey and he'll go through all of the, the corridor, some of the key areas, and then we'll come back to how we can be more competitive in this for cycle six. Thanks, Jessica. Um, for those that are on the call that uh, were able to join us a few years ago at the end of 2019, um, we looked at a lot of different photos of what some other cities have done and um, trying to really get a feel for what the neighborhood liked, uh, what it didn't think was such a good fit for the Mesa and Cliff Drive. And uh, from that, um, we took that information and we put some concepts together and then brought it back to the community to get a sense for whether or not we're on the right track. And so um, if you were able to join us back in 2019, some of this might look familiar to you. So. Uh, next slide, please. Great. So um, again, this is the Cliff Drive corridor, and you can see where the existing traffic signals are, uh, Mesa Lane, Flora Vista, Migs, and uh, Loma Alta. Um, those three pedestrian crosswalk symbols right there, um, those are the most frequent uh, requests that we get along Cliff Drive. It's, it's not to say we don't get any others, but um, that's just the most frequent ones we hear about. Um, and if you go to the next slide, please. So back in 2019, we kind of threw an idea out there. Well, instead of just those three, what if we have crosswalks about every thousand feet uh, and that would cover all the major uh, entryways into the neighborhood and also coincide with where all the bus stops are. So if you can think people um, uh, either the beginning of the day or the end of the day, if they get on the bus or get off the bus and they live across the street, they have to cross Cliff Drive in order to get to or from that bus stop. So um, this really resonated with people. It was uh, um, very well received. So that, that's what we move forward with is this concept with more frequent crosswalks. Um, also a new traffic signal at the west end of the shopping center, so that's Camino Calma, and also traffic signals at the SBCC driveway entrances. Next slide, please. And so we, um, 
again, when we were showing photos, uh, we were kind of trying to get a sense from the community what, uh, what they found appealing. Um, what will the bike path look like? And so one of the things we considered was a two-way bike path um, on the same side of the street where there'd be just a single path and uh, there'd be two-way users on it or one-way paths on either side of the street. And some of the considerations are safety, different types of users and good connections to uh, neighborhoods, uh, the schools and shopping. And also good connectivity to the new Las Positas bike path. Next slide, please. So that's an example of a one-way bike path. Uh, as you can see, that's a bike lane up against the curb, but there's a raised barrier there that acts as protection um, for anybody that's using the path. Next slide, please. That's an example up in San Francisco. See, so you have a landscape buffer. And, uh, oh, sorry, next slide. Thank you. Uh, this is down in Orange County, so this is uh, along the, their coastal route. So that's a two-way bike path on the other side of that median. So that median separates roadway traffic um, from the, the bike path. Next slide. And again, just another, uh, another photo of that same bike path down in Orange County. Next slide. So the kind of the pros and cons with one-way bike paths versus two-way. Um, the one-way, they're more likely to be used by high-speed cyclists. Um, we just know based on experience with the, the beachway and uh, what we're seeing on Las Positas is that the high-speed cyclists like to be moving in the same direction of traffic. They, uh, they don't want to get onto a two-way path and mix with slower users, beach cruisers, you know, people with strollers or walking their dogs. Um, they want to be on a higher speed facility. Uh, with the one-way um, bike pass as well, parking would have to be eliminated on one side of Cliff Drive. Um, just with the widths of everything, there, there wouldn't be enough room to maintain parking on both sides of Cliff. Uh, with a two-way path, uh, it's more likely to attract users. It's not, not just going to be for cyclists, but um, like I said, there's going to be uh, people with strollers, dogs, um, slower speed cycles. Um, all sorts of electric everything that we're seeing these days, um, but it's really that separated space where people can use those kind of devices a lot more safely. Uh, but the thing about two-way paths, it has some really special safety considerations at intersections and driveways, just because um, pathway users might not be moving in the direction that traffic is expecting them. Next slide. So um, that being said, what we heard back from the community when uh, we, showed all those photos and ideas is there was, like I mentioned, really strong support for more crosswalks and traffic signals. Um, uh, there was somebody at one of the meetings in 2019 that said that the Mesa kind of feels like two different neighborhoods um, because of Cliff Drive, and they really want that cohesiveness and just being able to get back and forth easily. Um, there was really strong support for a two-way bike path as opposed to the, the one-way, and the aesthetic should complement the Mesa neighborhood. Next slide. Okay, so we're just going to um, not look at all the plans up and down the corridor, but just kind of highlight a few sections so you can get a sense for uh, uh, what the proposal is. So starting near the roundabout near Cliff and Las Positas. And again, this is a two-way bike path that's going to be running along the south side of the road. So this is kind of an uh, aerial looking photo from just above the roundabout looking up the hill. So that red arrow on the right side, that just shows uh, where that bike path is gonna go um, up the south side of the road there. Next slide. Uh, so this is just more of an engineering drawing, but you can see the, the skipped line running along the bottom of the screen. That's just the little dashed center line that's gonna run along the middle of the path. Uh, it'd be a 12 foot wide path. And then the beige area would be kind of a landscaped buffer between the path uh, and the roadway. So next slide. And then uh, getting up the hill as we get to the Mesa Lane Flora Vista intersection. Um, this is one of the harder um, locations to squeeze a path through along the corridor. Next slide, please. Uh, so you can see the, the path would have to probably narrow to about 10 feet wide instead of 12 feet wide in order to squeeze it along the south side of the road. But you can see how it would run along the south side of the road there. 
Um, one of the uh, things we heard from the community is the, cro the school crosswalk here to get across Cliff Drive. Um, because Cliff Drive is so wide, um, parents and their children really feel exposed to traffic when they're uh, walking across Cliff Drive, even though there's a traffic signal. Um, so one idea is to use some of that dead space in the middle of the road and put in a raised island. And that would just give some separation and not make the, the crossing feel quite so wide. Next slide, please. Um, going up Flora Vista towards the Monroe School entrance. Um, there is enough room on Flora Vista that we could widen that narrow sidewalk by a few feet and perhaps even put some tree wells in line with the, uh, the parking aisle just to add some uh, shade and some aesthetic to that street as well. So that was also in the proposal. Next slide. So this is a typical um, intersection where the pathway crosses an intersection. You can see that green, um, green box right there. So that would mean the, uh, the crossing where the crossing goes across the side street. It would be highlighted green just for extra emphasis. Uh, but the real safety feature here, I mentioned before the two-way paths have uh, some special safety considerations. Um, if you can just imagine somebody turning left from Cliff Drive uh, onto the side street, in this case, Oliver, um, we just want them to slow down a little bit and not take that corner so fast, just, uh, just to be mindful of the pathway users. So all of the side streets will have what we're calling um, raised crossings. So we're going to show you some photos of those in the next slide. There's one at the Santa Barbara Airport. Uh, that's just for pedestrians, but you can get a sense for it's, it's just got a gentle uh, hump to it that uh, slows people down when it goes over it. Next slide, please. And this is one in the Bay Area. So you can see this is an actual bike path um, that crosses a side street. So you can just see it's got a, a gentle little rise to it just to get drivers to slow down as they're crossing the path. So that's what the side street crossings would by and large look like on Cliff Drive. Next slide, please. So near the shopping center, um, this is the most complicated uh, part of the project. And next slide. Um, the, the challenge here is really there's a lot of driveway access. And because of the lot of the driveway access, and this is where the highest volume traffic volumes are in the corridor, there, there's a history of left turn collisions um, just in front of the shopping center between Camino Calma and Migs. And our concern is that um, given that there's a history of left turn collisions, and that's I, I, when, I'm, when I say that, I mean people are pulling out of driveways and trying to turn left on the cliff drive. Um, if we add another element that drivers have to consider, uh, when they're pulling out of driveways, namely a bike path, um, that's just going to lead to even more collisions. So that adding that two-way path just adds to the complexity of what's going on out there. And the left turns really put path users at risk. And the path users, you know, they're um, cyclists, pedestrians, um, they're more likely to get injured if they, if they get hit than uh, somebody in a vehicle on vehicle collision. Next slide. Um, this just shows some of the history of all the collisions. Each one of those little dates on there is kind of the, the date that the left turn involved collision happened and roughly where it happened in this corridor. Next slide. So in order to make the path safe, um, we're proposing raised medians along this section. And there'd be breaks in the median that drivers could turn left into some of the driveways. Um, but not turn left out. It's those left outs that are really the safety problem. Um, the, the community quite honestly struggled with this back in 2019. It's, uh, it's really an essential feature for the safety of the path. Without those raised medians, uh, the two-way path isn't viable through the section. Um, but the, the community was really concerned and um, they did note that if they can't turn left out of some of these driveways, that's gonna to add to the amount of U-turns that are gonna happen. Um, so that's why the median is so wide right there, just uh, so there'd be enough of a turning radius to make U-turns. Next slide. As I mentioned, the medians are a trade-off and it's uh, driveway access versus safety and trying to find a, a good balance between the two. 
Um, uh, but as I mentioned, without it, uh, there, we just don't have a viable path through this section. Next slide. So moving further east uh, near the city college area, uh, next slide. So on the left there, where the, the green box is, that's Oceano. Uh, that's the last residential street before you get to City College. And again, that would have that raised crossing that we looked at a few slides ago. Uh, and then the, the longer green box on the right-hand side there, that's the City College West Campus driveway. And that would have a new traffic signal. Next slide. And if we keep moving further east, and let's look at the East Campus driveway. Uh, just on the left-hand side of the screen there, the East Campus driveway would also get a new traffic signal. Um, that traffic signal would be tied into the Loma Alta intersection uh, traffic signal just because they are so close together to be some um, special coordination required. And then going down the hill, you can see the, the path uh, curving along that south side of the road there. Um, the path would be up against that kind of stone retaining wall that goes through the viaduct area. There is not enough room going through the section right now uh, to maintain the existing number of lanes, uh, two lanes going uphill, two lanes going downhill, um, and a pathway. Um, so what we're proposing to do is maintain two downhill lanes. Um, that's a really heavy movement during the PM peak hour, especially when everybody's leaving City College, and having one uphill lane. And we'll show where that merge is going to happen in the next slide. This is the Rancheria intersection. Um, so as we're kind of going from the right-hand side of the screen to the left, there's two lanes that will go through that Rancheria intersection. And then just as they're starting to go around the curve, that's when they'll merge together. And that's how we'll get enough space in order to squeeze that path in there against that stone retaining wall. Uh, the Rancheria intersection is also important because it's gonna be a connection into the future west side bike route uh, that's gonna wind its way through the west side. Next slide. And the path would end at Castillo Street, uh, right by the gas station. Um, so the path's going to be a little bit over three miles long um, from uh, Henry's Beach all the way to Castillo Street. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Ms. Grant. Thank you. Oh, you're muted. <laughs> One of these days, we'll get the unmute function correctly. So thank you, Derek, for bringing us through the plans. Again, if you have any questions, feel free. You could enter them now. Um, we'll take them in a few minutes. As far as getting back to the grant, and we were one point shy. I wanted to address, well, how could we hopefully get a successful grant application this next round? Uh, when we did meet with the um, active transportation program team at the state to go over the grant application and the scores, what we found was we were at near perfect scores in the areas that we could control. There is potentially a couple points that we could pick up from our narrative um, to uh, clarify a couple of items. Where we fell short this grant cycle from getting award versus no award came down to leveraging. Um, and that is basically having match monies contributions for this project. And so typically what the city has done in, in the past and some of our other past active transportation program grants is um, approximately a 1% match that would give us one point. So in order to um, get higher points, um, there is a breakdown for that. They run in basically 5% intervals. And so for example, for basically the $25 million project, if we wanted to have a 5% match, uh, that would yield two points. Um, and that would be approximately 1.2 million. 
Um, again, if 10% was the match, it'd be two point, um, almost 2.5 million and so forth. Um, and so again, the, the ideal situation would potentially be then the 20% um, percent match that would give a maximum point for that category in the grant. Um, what we're seeing just in the past is how um, scoring has been in the past three cycles. I know that there's been five cycles of the grant, but the rubrics have changed um, uh, over the cycles, but the last three cycles have had the same uh, grant scoring rubrics. And these have been sort of the cutoff points for project awards. So in cycle three, if you had a score of 83 points, that would have um, put us in a position for um, a grant award. But as you could see over time with each cycle, it's getting more and more competitive. Um, so whether, you know, in a cycle three was 83 points, cycle five is 90 points, we expect cycle six to even be more competitive. Um, and so that grant leveraging, going back to this graphic, would be very important. So for next steps, where we're at in the discussion with city council is in the springtime, um, the city council will uh, we'll be returning to them for direction on the match funding. Uh, again, this is an amazing project, uh, but there are lots of capital infrastructure projects that are also um, amazing. And there's finite dollars to fund um, various items. And so that again, will those discussions will happen during in the context of the budget discussions for the city. And as far as for the grant application, the deadline is June 16th, 2022. And we do have, there's the active transportation program cycle grant augmentation. There were some um, monies to the tune of about 500 million that could have been back at the um, last cycle um, with some of the surplus state monies. Um, that is a line item in the governor's budget, but it would still need to go through the legislature if there's going to be any potential funds from that last cycle. Again, we just missed it by one point. If there were augmented funds, we, this project would be positioned very well um, for that. So if we're still on standby to see how that plays out, um, but we probably will not see that until after the cycle six grant application is due. So as a resident, how can you get involved? Um, is attending the city budget hearings um, and just being engaged with that process and, and then speaking on behalf of this, this uh, community supported project. Also engaging state representatives for the cycle five augmentation and for the cycle six uh, funding. And you could help us too with the additional support letters. Uh, we had a tremendous stakeholder support um, and resident support for the 2020 grant application. And um, we'd hopefully like to see that to continue. Um, if you have any follow-up, we'll take questions now, but if there's anything else that you can think about um, or think about later, feel free to send us an email and we can respond to that. We also are having an in-person workshop at La Mesa Park this Saturday from 10 to noon. It's a, an open house format and um, you could come by and see the entire route. I'm going to just quickly show 
um, sort of as the photo that you see here was one of our workshops and we'll have a bunch of tables around at La Mesa Park showing the entire corridor route. So you're welcome to take a look at that. We also have it posted on um, the entire corridor online too on the project webpage. I believe it's um, santabarbaraca.gov backslash um, and the backslash after that would be Cliff Drive. I think with that, Katie, I'll turn it over to you to moderate some of the questions. I do see it looks like we have a few questions written. And again, you can also, um, after we go through a few of those questions, feel free to use the raise hand um, as well. Yeah, thank you, Jessica. It looks like we got a couple questions. Um, so the first question that we received is, where can we find the recording of the webinar? Thank you. That will also be posted on the website. Uh, we will have your contact information for attending the webinar as well. Uh, so we'll, we'll get a, a posted link to that. And it usually from when we have this webinar, it takes about uh, two to three days for it to be posted on our webpage. All right, thank you. Um, the second question we received is, if the road is really narrow at Mesa Lane, why not reduce to one car lane in each direction? I'll take that one. Um, that, that's a great question. And that's one we've, uh, been struggling with for um, well since uh, since Caltrans relinquished uh, Cliff Drive to the city back in 2013. Um, it has to do with that traffic signal. Uh, Mesa Lane and Flora Vista they're offset from one another. They don't line up going across Cliff Drive, which is really unfortunate because it quite honestly it messes everything up. Um, what happens is it takes so much time to serve the, if you can just think of the way the traffic signal cycles, it serves Mesa Lane and then Flora Vista, and then it goes back to a green light on Cliff Drive. It takes so much time to serve those side streets separately. And during that time, um, the amount of queue that can build up on Cliff Drive, uh, there just isn't enough capacity in order to flush the traffic out every time with just one lane. Um, back in late 2019, before the, the pandemic hit, um, we actually did some experiments. We went and closed down um, lanes on Cliff Drive going through that intersection just to see if it would work. And uh, during the PM peak, especially coming up from the roundabout, um, going eastbound on Cliff Drive, um, there were queues like 12, 1500 feet long. Um, and again, that just has to do with the traffic signal having to serve those two side streets um, separately. Thank you, Derek. Um, the next question we have is about lighting. It says, I wonder about lighting. So many college students currently hang out in the middle turn lanes to cross the street. I'm often scared I'm going to run them over when I enter the turn lane when it's dusk to dark. Thank you kind of a statement and a question. Yeah, and, and two things that have been um, incorporated into the project to address just what you're saying here, much more frequent crosswalks, especially by City College, so that uh, those students that have to cross back and forth to, um, a lot of them live in the apartments on the north side of the road, um, they have a safe place to cross. All those crosswalks will have uh, good nighttime lighting on them as well. So. Um, visible at night and safe places to cross. Yeah, and on our um, maps too, the yellow circles indicate uh, where a new light will be. Um, and the orange circles are the existing lights. Awesome, thank you both. The next question is, how does the grant plan keep people from speeding, which would still be so unsafe for cyclists and pedestrians? Another great question, yes. And um, 
that really gets to the heart of what um, the community is after. Uh, and, and even before the road was relinquished from Caltrans to the city, it was really the neighborhood that pushed both the city and Caltrans um, to do the relinquishment and, and bring Cliff Drive under city control. Uh, from Caltrans perspective, the, the road functioned just fine. Um, it's a big wide road. Um, there's not a lot of stops along it. And, um, you know, that that's consistent with um, the way Caltrans roads operate. Um, but the community really wanted uh, traffic to operate in a way that's just much more consistent um, with its neighborhood. So um, in order to change traffic speeds, you really have to change the environment. Uh, when you have big wide roads and big wide lanes, don't be surprised when people drive and treat it like a highway. Um, but if you can narrow the roadway in a way that still um, provides for good access and traffic operations, um, uh, more crosswalks, more pedestrian activity, more cyclists, you're going to see those operating speeds start to drop. Uh, it's been really interesting to watch what's happening on Las Positas as that bike path project uh, is coming along. Um, for those who remember, it's, it's been under construction for a little while now, but the speed limit was 55 miles an hour before that project started. Once the project is done, we'll have to reperform the speed survey to establish a new speed limit out there. But we're seeing operating speeds kind of in the low 40s right now with a lot of drivers. Um, so that's probably where the speed limit's gonna end up, probably 40, 45, somewhere in there. But I think that just goes to show you when you change the character of the roadway, um, people start driving differently. But like I said, if you have a big wide road, uh, don't be surprised when people drive fast. Thank you. Our next question is, how is the bike connection supposed to work at the roundabout in both directions? I fail to see how using the crosswalks is practical for most routine cyclists. I ride through this intersection several times a month. Good question. Yep. Uh, cyclists will have several options. Um, going up the hill, uh, at least to Mesa Lane, there's going to be shoulders. So we expect some of the um, uh, more dedicated and confident cyclists are likely going to stay in the street and ride on the shoulder. Uh, a lot of those cyclists, they, they feel per perfectly comfortable riding in the traffic lane right through the roundabout with traffic. Um, but for those cyclists that don't want to mix with traffic, um, yeah, the, the crosswalks are, are the way around the roundabout and they will be the connection point between Las Positas uh, and the bike path. And Derek, can you cover to um, the from the roundabout towards Arroyo Borough Beach and the recent grant that you received um, for that? Oh, thanks for bringing that up. Yes. Um, Along, uh, along the south side of the, the roundabout, if you can go back to that roundabout graphic. And the, the bike path along the south side of the roundabout, it's already there. Uh, when the roundabout was built a few years ago, it was built with this future path in mind. Um, but it ends just on the, the western end of the roundabout. We, we did recently receive funding to extend that uh, all the way over to the parking lot, um, exiting a row borough and that crosswalk at Allen Road. So. Um, that's happening and that, that's, that's exciting too. So there's some dead space on the south side of the road that we'll be able to extend that path. Awesome, thank you. Um, the next question that we have is, is feedback from webinars and workshops part of the grant application? Yes, we are scored on public participation and engagement. So, um, uh, events like this and what's going to happen on Saturday and what we hear back from the community, uh, that all gets fed into our grant application and uh, uh, the scores reflect that. Thank you, Derek. Um, the next question that we have says, it looks like a cliff drive speed study was done since the speed limit has been reduced to 35 miles per hour, correct? 
Uh, my family really appreciates this change. Can you explain how this change was approved? Yes, so as I mentioned, um, uh, a speed survey has to be done. One will be done soon on Las Positas to reevaluate that speed survey. Uh, on Cliff Drive, um, every seven years, uh, we have to update the speed survey. So there, there was one done in 2014, just shortly after uh, um, the city took Cliff Drive over from Caltrans. Seven years later, 2021, we had to update the speed survey. The speeds had come down just a hair and there's rules within that the state has about uh, whether we're, we have to round up or down to the nearest five miles an hour. But uh, in this case, we were able to round down to 35 miles an hour. And uh, we did talk to our police department about it and uh, they, they felt it was an appropriate move as well to uh, change the speed limit to 35. Excellent, thank you. Um, the next question is, could the traffic signals at Floor Vista be replaced with a roundabout? Good question. Yes, we studied that um, as part of the uh, work that was done back in 2019. Um, to put a full roundabout there would uh, it'd be an awfully big footprint and there would be property acquisition required um, to make it a true roundabout. We looked at what we called a peanut about. Um, so it kind of two little circles for each intersection. Um, yeah, kind of follow the cursor there. Um, the challenge was without property acquisition, um, the turning radius. So if you can imagine a school bus having to turn around the end of a peanut about, um, it just wasn't wide enough. So unfortunately, uh, a roundabout type intersection control just, just wasn't viable here without significant property acquisition. Thank you. The next question we have is, is the grade slash slope of Cliff Drive being considered for crosswalk locations? For example, looking towards Mesa Lane from Oliver Road, it is difficult to see approaching vehicles. Yes, and uh, we did do a preliminary evaluation of all the um, proposed locations and uh, visibility is, is adequate in order to put in a crosswalk. All of these crosswalks are gonna have, uh, if not a traffic signal, the pedestrian activated flasher system. So when there is a pedestrian present, there's going to be some um, flashing lights that are about eight to 10 feet up in the air too that'll aid with the visibility. Thank you. Uh, the next question says, when will the city council be looking at budget for this? Can we speak in support at those? It is anticipated that it will be around March coming up, but there hasn't been a date set yet to my knowledge. Um, once a date is known, uh, that is something Again, if you uh, send me your, your email address or if you're already part of um, the subscription uh, to the project from our webpage, we can uh, do an email blast for that. Thank you. Uh, the next question we have is, have you calculated the added traffic from Mesa Shopping Center onto Megs in order to go east on Cliff due to the left turn restrictions. Yes, we have. Uh, we we know that left turn, the eastbound left turn, there it is, uh, is going to get busier, uh, especially with the added U turns. Um, there are some traffic signal timing modifications that we can make to add to that traffic, but. Um, Again, no, no, no question about it though, the, uh, it is gonna add traffic to that traffic signal and that's a, a trade-off for the pathway. Thank you, Derek. Um, our next question says, as a pedestrian, I have been hit by a car while in the crosswalk at Cliff and Flora Vista. It was a car turning left from Flora Vista to Cliff. The island may make it even harder to see a pedestrian on the far side of cliff. 
Anything you can do to make it safer is appreciated. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, I don't know the specifics of uh, what happened um, when you got hit, but uh, generally the, the idea behind the islands are, um, they're, they're eight inches tall, they're, they're, they're short and they're um, largely free from obstructions. There might be a, a thin traffic signal pole in the middle of it, but um, very easy to see across the, the top of the island. The idea is when somebody's turning off of Flora Vista uh, to go left east on Cliff Drive, um, they're not able to cut that corner uh, as sharp as they are right now. And so they have to take it slower. And taking it slower uh, just means taking it more cautiously and um, by and large being more aware of surroundings and presence of pedestrians. So that, that's the idea with an island. Thank you. Um, the next question we have is, could the signals on cliff be adjusted to give buses priority through the intersections? Did you say buses? Yes, that's correct. Uh, Could the signals, yes. sorry, I'm yes, read it the, again. <laughs> yes, we, we've actually been talking to MTD about um, that kind of technology. Uh, we are using that technology on Outer State Street right now, but it is, uh, uh, it's not as high tech as is available on the market these days. There's some very high tech um, solutions that are out there. Uh, we haven't talked to MTD specifically about Cliff Drive, um, but uh, if, if there's interest on their part in order to speed up their bus service, um, we're very open to that conversation. Thank you. Um, so at this time, it looks like we've answered the 13 questions that we received. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to enter them in the Q&A or raise your hand. And at the moment, I don't see any hands raised. These are all great questions, by the way. We really um, appreciate comments and, and your feedback tonight. This is great. And if you're like me and you always have delayed questions, uh, <laughs> feel free to, um, again, email us as well. Katie, did any more? Oh, I think we got one more question. Okay. It says, uh, let's lower the speed limit overall on Cliff Drive. Why not 30? Yeah, good question. And uh, it, it comes back to the, the speed survey that we have to perform. What I didn't mention before is um, the state has a really specific procedure that we have to follow. Uh, when we're doing these speed surveys. So we actually have to go out and measure the speeds of the traffic is operating at and set the speed limit uh, according to that. Like I said, we're, we're able to round up or down a little bit depending on um, um, what exactly that those speeds are measured at. But if we don't set the speed limit according to the state's rules, uh, then the police are not allowed to enforce that speed limit. Um, so the most recent speed survey that we did uh, supported a 35 mile an hour speed limit. Um, but if we were to lower it to 30, then the police could not legally enforce out there. Um, like I said, the, the way we affect operating speeds is through good roadway design. And when we have big wide streets with wide lanes, uh, we can expect higher operating speeds. But if we um, change the character of the street, more street trees, crosswalks, um, a bike path, um, that's likely to bring the, the speeds more in line with what we're hearing that the, the community uh, would like. Thank you. Looks like we did get a couple more questions. Um, the next question is, how do you get on the mailing list? So you would go to our city web page and um, that is santabarbaraca.gov and it is and then you can do a backslash cliff drive will take you to the the project site 
if you have trouble navigating it, please um, email us and I can send you the direct link. Thanks, Jessica. Uh, the next question is, was a roundabout considered at SBCC West? Yes, great question. Um, yeah, back in 2019, um, when we were uh, having a lot of the community discussions a few years ago, um, one of the things that we did was to do a roundabout study. I mentioned the, the one at Mesa Lane and Flora Vista. Um, SBCC's West Campus Driveway and the Loma Alta intersection were also studied for potential roundabouts. And just like the Flora Vista intersection, we started running into space constraints. Um, the amount of space there just, just isn't large enough to, uh, to fit a roundabout. Seems like a big intersection, but uh, you'd be surprised how large roundabouts are. Um, the roundabout at Cliff Drive in Las Positas, just the roadway part itself is about 110 feet. Uh, and then on the outside of that, then you have the circulating sidewalks and everything. So by the time you add everything together, um, you know, you need somewhere between 120 and 130 feet across just to fit in everything. Um, just by way of reference, Cliff Drive, as it goes past uh, the West Campus driveway, is about 64 feet wide. So that roundabout plus the sidewalks and everything would be nearly twice as large as the, the width right there. And um, at that specific location, um, that's where Arroyo Hondo kind of goes under the Cliff Drive right there. And there's some pretty steep drop offs on Cliff Drive. So it would be a, a really expensive undertaking um, with the amount of retaining and uh, whatnot. So it, it just wasn't, a, unfortunately, a, a feasible alternative right there. Um, it would have been a great solution from a traffic perspective because um, roundabouts are just really traffic responsive. When there's side street traffic, you know, you just yields and it circulates and goes. Um, when there's not, traffic just keeps flowing. Um, it, and, and it would have managed the, the peaks for the West Campus driveway really well in between classes can get really busy at SBCC. Thanks, Derek. Um, the next question that we received says, a supporter asked if there might be any further bike lane improvements along Shoreline Drive as part of this project or another. Uh, what's the future likelihood of a multi-use path along Shoreline, along Shoreline Drive in front of the park? Uh, great question. Um, that was contemplated back in 2019 uh, as we were kind of just beginning our engagement with the community. Um, Shoreline Drive uh, from Meigs and then as it goes down and kind of curls to the east there uh, and then to about Loyola, which is maybe about right below the eye and shopping center. Yeah, right there. So between there and the, all the way back to Meigs, uh, it's 64 feet wide as well. It's the exact same width as Cliff Drive. So we actually posed the question to the community, um, what do you think about a multi-use path along Shoreline as well? And um, it just wasn't as high priority for the community. We didn't get a lot of traction with that. So I think people uh, that we talked to back in 2019 were satisfied with the bike lanes that are in place and didn't see a need for a multi-use path. Thank you. Um, that looks like that is all of the questions. I have seen a couple hands pop up and then go away. So maybe just give it a minute or so to make sure we don't have any last questions. Okay, I'm still not seeing any hands raised or any additional questions at this time. Okay, 
Well, with that, I really appreciate um, everyone being on the call uh, this evening with us. And um, again, if you have any further questions, uh, feel free to reach out to us at for Cliff Drive at SantaBarbaraCA.gov. And if you want to meet us in person, we'll be there at La Mesa Park from 10 to noon this Saturday. Uh, again, we will have the entire route um, uh, laid out on tables there if you want to see that and have any additional feedback. Or if you have any uh, members of your family that couldn't come tonight or any of your neighbors you think would be interested, yes, feel free to send them to the park or um, again to the project webpage or to our email. Uh, thanks again. And um, yes, wishing you all a wonderful evening. Thanks again.